When I was under Ron Heimberger, I learned about three different uh, Wing Chun blades forms. And then when we got with Yip Ching, I learned his form too. And it's interesting because some of the forms that uh, we studied before under Ron are, are still out there. I can see them when I look at different people doing it on the internet. And what I noticed about those, and this is one of the reasons that I decided that I liked Yip Ching's better and I, I kind of threw out the other ones, is that uh, his system fits better with the Wing Chun unarmed fighting system. The stances are really similar. There's a few different variations because you have to um, work with the blades and the, you know, the weapons have different balance, etc. But um, the movements are very, very similar and, uh, and just very natural to a Wing Chun person. And in addition to that, um, it seems to me that um, in the other forms that I see, there's a lot more repetition of, of moves. Now, of course, you repeat moves within a, a chapter of the form. But they're repeating moves between chapters. So it's like, say, chapter 2 has the same move as chapter 4. And um, Yip Ching's form is different um, in everything. It has, so it has more vari variety, more variety than any of the other forms that I've ever seen. And it lends me to believe that it was the original. Well, as I was telling you before, you know, it's difficult to fight with Basano because they're, they're just so, you know, they're dangerous to hit with. And so, um, as I was going through with my students and we were, you know, trying to come up with ways where we could actually hit each other with uh, something that really worked and it was unpredictable, um, we came up with several different weapons that we might, you know, use. So in the beginning, we worked with water bats. Um, and we liked those because you could hit each other pretty hard and it, it didn't really hurt. It was just, you know, kind of fun. Uh, it, it, it did kind of hurt when you tried to stab with them because the ends were hard. But what we really had trouble with eventually was that they're not firm enough to stop a, 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 someone else from coming in and hitting you. I mean, you, you know, raise it to defend yourself and it would bend and they'd hit you anyway. So um, we started trying to come up with our own forms of weapons and we went to the hardware store. And uh, by this time, this was about 2003, I was working with uh, a couple of students, Chris Chrisman and Greg Coleman. And uh, like I say, we went to the hardware store and we, you know, we tried a bunch of different things. We, we put PVC together because we thought that would be light and it would be fun, you know, easy to work with. But it ended up breaking and uh, that was kind of painful. So we um, then, you know, came up with, with this type of weapon here which is made out of you know, lead pipe and, uh, and then there's a wooden dowel in here with a tennis ball on the end of it wrapped with foam, insulation foam and um, duct tape and you know we made four of these so we each had two and, and they were a little bit longer than, than the bottom nose you can see up bottom nose here and the, the R blade here and we found that as we were working with it we could um, we could come up with applications for probably about 75% of everything that was in the form, everything that was in Yip Ching's form. But there were another 25% of, of techniques that we, we just couldn't figure out. I mean, we kept trying and we said, that just doesn't work. That, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, no matter what we do with this, it, we can't make it work. And um, then we had a student, his name was Jeremy Tuck, and he was... Um, he had been participating in some of those medieval reenactment games. So he knew how to put together some other um, blades or other weapons and, and he used their techniques to put together this, um, which was kind of nice because whereas the, the duct tape ones were kind of sticky, this tape that's made with packing tape is kind of slippery. And we felt like that was probably going to simulate um, the movement of metal on metal more closely. So we tried that and when we did, we found out that now we can only do probably like 65 to 70 percent of the of the techniques in the form. These um, shorter blades just wouldn't do it. Um, and, and we decided that we probably needed longer blades. I was really reluctant to do that in the beginning, but around um, 2009, um, I had a student up at the University of Utah. I was teaching up there. And his name was Ben Judkins, and he was a political science professor at the U. And um, <clears throat> he was, he's just a wizard at research. And he and I started talking about collaborating on a book, and that book's about to come out this summer um, on the history of Wing Chun. 
But he also, when he was doing his research, he started looking into the, the blades, and we found out that uh, you know this type of, of weapon that, that, that looks like this wasn't showing up until the early 1900s. But this kind of weapon, now of course these been around for a very long time, the Hudia do instead of the Vachem do, they've been around for a long time. Um, but we found that these have a much longer history, and they're also much longer than the Vachem do. So if we put you know, a couple of those together, you can see that the Hudia do is you know quite a bit longer. And as we were doing research, and and as we were doing research with this. We also found that there's varied um, lengths of the hoodie dough as well. So we thought, well, maybe, maybe we did have a longer blade. And as we kept on looking at it, um, there were several different texts regarding uh, um, double saber forms in that period. So eventually we decided that we wanted to um, try something that was longer, kind of like a saber. And we uh, started working with blades that looked you know, something like this, some, like this length of blade. And, um, you know, I had one, and he had one, and, and you know, we were doing one-handed blades this long, because that's kind of how you do it. And we also found with blades of that length that they were probably about 25% of the things in the form you still couldn't do. So we decided we wanted to focus on something that was, you know, maybe in between. And so we started using these Shanae. And Shania are great because, you know, you can hit somebody with them really hard as long as you protect your face. Um, and um, these were just the right length because you could, you know, you could spin them around like that without cutting yourself. It just has to be about the length of your, of your arm. And um, it turns out that we could do 100% of the things in the form with blades of this length. You could come up with a, a, an application for everything. The only thing that we had trouble with was, you know, sometimes you have to invert the weapon and so you needed some sort of guard. So Ken Smock, one of my students, has a friend of in Logan who kind of came up with this sort of thing for, for me. And, um, and then, you know, I, I don't have uh, access to him, so um, I had a student named Eli Bar Barlow who put those together for me now, and that he does that. But, uh, you know, now that we have that system, everything that, that you can do in the form, in your Ching's form, is, is, you know, is explained. We, we can do it. Oh, I should mention that we also started reading some of the texts from the medieval swordsmen, like, like George Silver particularly. And um, he, he agreed with lots of things that we were saying with the blades, and so we started looking at some of the things that he was saying, how you use them. And we adapted some of the things that, that as we thought of it, we were saying that probably, you know, if you were using this length of blade, you couldn't do it like this, and they probably just changed that for bottom dough. And so now, you know, we got a system that, that works with dual sabers, and I think we're the only ones that have a dual saber fighting system that I've ever seen. On